So have you set have you set intention for today? You feel yeah. good. I just hope you're able to receive all the love of the community. I hope you're able to receive all the love of the community and just feel that being right back to you as you as you lead us. Be a pain to sneak out of here, isn't it? Thank you. <laughs> Malia. Yeah, that's why I thought, but there doesn't seem to be a lot of room. I don't know. You guys make that decision.
Welcome folks in our physical space. Welcome those who are joining us by Zoom. Abe, Darcy, Michelle, Moon, Rabbi Ariel, Steve, welcome. Welcome to this you all's big adult be mitzvah day. We have traveled physically and spiritually a long way to be here today. Each of us, can we take a big collective breath in and out? <coughs> settling into this space. I've had the total pleasure of working with this Be Mitzvah cohort over the last year. I'm joined up here by Steve Greenberg, who has taught and tutored and cheered on and loved these four wise-hearted learners for the last years. Steve, our appreciation for you cannot be contained. It cannot be contained with one woo-hoo, but I'd like to at least start there. So on the count of three, can we give Steve a woo-hoo? One, two, three, woo-hoo! I have a few quick words of framing logistical and spiritual before we get going in today's service. We come from so many backgrounds to this moment. Some of us have spent our lives regularly in Jewish prayer spaces, and for some of us, this is a first time. We'll be using prayers and songs, which are mostly in Hebrew, as a way to send love and strength to our cohort. If you know the words, sing them out loud. If you don't, feel free to sing Lie, Die, Die. Our prayer book offers the prayers both in Hebrew, in the Hebrew alphabet on the right, and in transliteration on the left. We ask a few things to help us keep this a prayerful space today, that you turn off your cell phones, that you try to keep our prayer books off the ground, and that you refrain from applauding. At the moments when you want to show this cohort your wild amazement, I recommend a good foot stomp and a classic sheer tikva wave. <laughs> um, I should have said this before, but if you feel comfortable moving up a little bit, if you see empty spaces in front of you and it feels good for you to be a little bit closer, that'll help us hold this as a more prayerful space. So if we can scoot in at all, if anyone is brave and wants to move up to these first rows, that is totally welcome. Okay, I'm gonna name the big elephant in the room today. Ave, Michelle, Darcy, and Moon are not 13 years old. <laughs> if you were expecting a normal be mitzvah today, you are in the wrong place. Go to Temple Israel. <laughs> Instead of children becoming adults, we have with us four Jewish adults who are rededicating themselves to Jewish le living, learning, and leadership. This is not so much a transformation, not so much, uh, I don't know, butterflies coming out of their cocoon, but rather like trees deepening, stretching roots and branches. I've already seen the joy that this grounding has given to the four of you. Today, you get to share that joy with this big room full of your loved ones, and we, in turn, get to beam it back in the direction of you. 
As wise-hearted adults, this community has trusted the four of you all with some of the most challenging Torah in our tradition, the Torah of Parshat Tazaria, which discusses disease, healing, quarantine, and reunion. The path through these illnesses that the text lays out is difficult and at times it's offensive. I've seen the three of you, the four of you all, hold this Torah with integrity and kindness, with a reverence for the tradition and a courage to push back. As we move into this Torah, we'll begin with a song that speaks about maintaining sacred relationship, even in the midst of the really hard stuff. It's a call and a response and can be found in your supplements. The words are, we are good, we are flawed. Darcy, take us away. We are good, we are flawed, we are flawed, we are the voice of an imperfect God. We are good, we are good, we are strong, we are flawed, we are the voice of an imperfect God. Yai, dai, dai, yai, 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 Light up our tallest putter honors, Savannah, Jessica, Dan, Eli, Malia, Lauren, and Mindy to help us begin the service. Cohort, you can find the blessing on page 72. Sorry, Jess. If you want to scoot over a little bit, Darcy. Okay, Tal is putting on three, two, one. Cohort three, two, one. Baruch Ata You all, may these tally tote today and going forward be a, a physical embodiment of the symbol of community surrounding you on all sides. At the moments in the service where you feel cohort that your voice is wobbling, in the moments in the service, folks in the, in the call hall that you feel like you don't know the words, know that we are bound together with a cloth all surrounding us, all holding us in love. We'll begin our service today with the words, Mode Ani, waking up our body and bringing it into the space on page 68. Modea. Ooh, I have the wrong melody for us. <laughs> Three anilifalecha. Melecha vikaya.
We welcome our souls into the space on page 78. Turn to page 100. in body or spirit on page 108. <laughs>
you can be seated. We'll turn forward to page 110. In this prayer, we thank God for bringing light into this world. I invite folks to take a look out the windows to see the blue sky come again, to see the colors and the shadows that come into our space. Taking a big breath in and out together, we bless on the bottom of page 110. Baruch Ata Adonai Yotzer Hameorot. We turn to page 112. In this prayer, we bless a God that brings love into this world. And I invite you to think of a person in your life that embodies love for you today, imagining the way that they make you feel, taking a big breath in and out. We bless together on the bottom of the page. Baruch Ata Adonai Habocher Be'amo Yisrael Be'ahava. We turn to page 114 for the Shema. If it's your tradition to rise, feel free to rise. If it's your tradition to sit, feel free to sit. Three, two, one. Shema Yisrael. Seated. Page one sixteen. Ve ahavta. Ve homeodeha. Ve hayu. Hadavari ha ele. Asherot se irtsaleha. As we sing out for words of liberation, I'm going to invite up Della for some extra help on page 122. We sing these words moving. Oh my gosh. <laughs> Thank you all. I told the cohort when I skipped over a uh, Devar Torah, someone should, um, should elbow me in the ribs. Um, and Darcy has success. <laughs> uh, yeah, it is. Uh, Darcy has successfully elbowed me in the ribs that it is time for Michelle's Devar Torah. <laughs> We stand here with our people, our community, a tapestry woven from its threads, different and yet united. We're not just reciting words here, but entering a sanctuary of our very own creation. We're delving deeper, more at ease with the questions and the convictions that are swirling within us and seeking a connection to something, something bigger than ourselves. We are four voices that rise in unison, each with its own interpretation, each word a thread, weaving a tapestry of faith, purpose, 
and belonging. Like the Micha Mocha sung in response to a miracle, our voices rise in response to the ongoing miracle of our bonds within this very community. Unbound by the old traditions, we have created our own tapestry of strength, wisdom, and compassion that reflects our own unique journey to this very moment. And unlike a bar or bat mitzvah at 13, this is not an entry into the fold, but a continual unfolding, not unlike a blossoming flower. With roots grounded in this very community, our understanding expands like branches reaching towards the open sky and nourished by the fertile ground of this very community by acceptance and years of exploration. Just as the Micha Moha recounts past wonders, our roots draw strength from this community and our common ancestors. Here we are, part of a living tradition that is forever evolving, like these ancient words that resonate within us with whispers of possibilities and echoes of the strength found in unity. And like the Micha Moha speaks to awe and gratitude, we let these words fill us with wonder and appreciation for the bonds that we all share. So let these be the compass that guide us as we navigate the next leg of our own Jewish paths. This is our kavanah, not set in stone, but ever unfolding with our growth and deepening understanding as we continue this Jewish journey. Shabbat shalom. Let's take a moment to tap into that power. Michelle, may our prayers today live up to those words. May we sit in that grounding and feel the strength of what you've given us. And let's try that out together. You can find the words on page 122. We'll find ourselves moving in the direction of our tafila, our amida. We'll start off in song together on page 124, hearing some prayers from our cohort members, from Steve, and then moving into quiet together. We'll start off again on page 124. Rising in body or spirit. Adonai Yeah. Uh-huh. 
mesmo. Shalom. When people read over Tazria, our partial this week, most people's first inclination is not, ooh, fun, skin disease. <laughs> when there's a complicated Torah passage, it can be difficult to find a way in, a link, a connection to this is why we're rereading Torah. It can still speak to me this long after it was written. Well, I didn't exactly say, Oh, fun, skin disease. I did know where to start. My first thought on reading the sections of Tezria, on keeping skin diseases contained, the multiple levels of process, noting what a particular skin issue looks like, which cases need a priest, how long to quarantine for, and what the conditions for being readmitted into the group were, was that it's an approach to public health in a time where we understood scientifically how disease and illness work. For some context, we didn't know what germs were until the 1800s, scientifically. The goal in Tazria is to keep disease from spreading. They had quarantine and isolation protocols and reintegration rituals. In between times, afflicted people were either confined to their home or outside the camp. 
I gave Dwyer last June about the connections between isolation and community care when we see Miriam get stricken with Zahara, leprosy, and the community waits to move on until she's healed. While Tazria is in a separate moment for Miriam's isolation, it's connected because here we see the rules under which she needed to isolate in more depth. Here, we learn the specific circumstances one would need to exit isolation, something that during our current pandemic, our national health guidelines no longer provide. Isolation and prevention of illness isn't easy. We all remember lockdown, and for some of us, precautions still need to be constantly taken for a variety of personal reasons and community protective measures. It wasn't a guarantee that I would be able to join an adult bar mitzvah cohort because it's important to my health that I am primarily in mass required spaces. Compared to the primary focus of prevention, including an infected individual being forced to isolate and have minimal communication, masking is way easier and still very effective in our current world. Many of my friends have similarly needed to remain isolated in similar ways. Where am I on my thing? There it is. Okay. Luckily, we have some additional technology that was not available to the Eastern Israelites and can remain more connected in some ways. Hi, Zoom folks. <laughs> Even with this technology, carrying a public health burden primarily on the backs of those already affected is unsustainable. The Macomb Union and the Caring Committee are working towards adding additional opportunities for connection in virtual spaces and other less physically direct modalities. We're past the days of requiring full isolation from community in part because we can remain physically distant, yet socially and spiritually together. So let's come together in new ways and remember, those of us on the other side of the screen or outside the camp. Shabbat Shalom. In a moment, we'll head into the Torah that Darcy helped us to preview, and we're gonna need all of our help for that. Cohort, I'm gonna invite you to move in the direction of standing in a line up here, a line of tradition, so that each of us can hold the Torah, even as Abe will be our Torah-holding captain. And everyone, we're gonna need your help singing along and coming up to the Torah and blessing it, touching it, kissing it, uh, to give these guys a little bit more power as they move into their Torah reading. You can find the prayers for taking out the Torah on page 246. We rise, we rise in body or spirit. Ki mitziyon Devar Adonai
Folks can take a seat. We'll hear our third Devar Torah today coming from Ave. Maybe not the best ordering. I'm still catching my breath from that. <laughs> uh, good morning. Good Shabbos. Thank you for being here. Um, I'm going to start with a little bit of a cliche and just let you all know up front that I don't really enjoy public speaking. Um, I'm an academic, so ostensibly it's part of my job, but anyone who knows me knows that it's really among my least favorite things. Um, you can imagine that while there are many things I was excited about uh, when it came to having a b'mitzvah, giving a Devar Torah wasn't really one of them. Um, this feeling wasn't helped particularly much when I learned what Parsha we were going to be reading for the service. Um, Parsha Tizriya, it's a very challenging text. It's one with a lot of gross body stuff and similarly gross misogyny. Um, the Parsha begins with instructions for how women who have recently given birth can return to a ritually purified state, uh, and notes that the process is more onerous if she's given birth to a girl. Um, the text then swerves into a pretty tedious obsession with various skin afflictions that also require purification. Um, this goes on for a total of seven readings, uh, three of which are almost solely dedicated to describing skin diseases. So you've got swellings, rashes, discolorations, uh, scaly affections, inflammations, and burns. Uh, near the end, Torah finally provides some additional instruction for cleanliness. Um, but that's it. So that's Parsha Tazria. So that's pretty fun. Um, <laughs> after I read these passages a few times in preparation for the experience of speaking in front of all of you, um, I did realize that, like the Torah, I, um, I'm fascinated by the body, both its role in our daily lives and its place in our spirituality. A lot of it comes from the fact that I'm trans, the question of what it means to possess a body, to be shaped in a particular cultural, religious, or medical image on the basis of largely uncontrollable and unknowable quirks of our anatomy is deeply personal to me. Um, on the one hand, in a passage that discusses the ritual impurity of women after giving birth to a boy or a girl and that lays out the precept of circumcision, um, I sense the absence of bodies like mine. If childbirth is sufficient to require more than two months of blood purification, uh, I can imagine the prescription for medical transition is probably similar. <laughs> On the other hand, Tosria speaks to me as a reminder that Judaism is, at its core, uh, an embodied religion. Um, it matters how we move our bodies and what we wear and the songs we move our mouths around because these are things that connect us to the Jews that have come before us and will come after us and the ones who are here with us right now. 
Um, although there's plenty of fear and judgment about the body in this Parsha, this is what stays with me when I read these passages. We all spend our lives in bodies, whether we like it or not. That's just our fate and our assignment. In Tezria, I'd like to find another assignment, that we pay attention to the holiness and worthiness of all bodies, ours and others, in whatever form they come. Uh, may we use our bodies to build a new world. May we use them to dance with our friends when the work of the day is done. Thank you. Um, can you believe the Torah that this group of people is bringing into our community? <laughs> we've, heard, we've heard these folks sing, we've heard these folks share words of meaning, and we'll have a little bit more of that to come. And now we come to the part of our service where we get to hear them chant from, from the Torah. Here's how we're going to do this. Each um, be mitzvah person is going to bless and chant, and we will give them a hearty mazel tov at the end of that. But we are going to wait for our full-on celebration until the very end of our Torah reading when we will sing, when we will maybe throw something at these people. <laughs> Each week, Julie reminds us to gently toss. One word that I'd love to say as we move into our Torah reading today is to return to a kavana that, that Rabbi Ariel gave yesterday. What would it look like for us to be able to make mistakes together as a community? One of my favorite things about Torah reading is that when someone makes a mistake, there's a community of people there to whisper gently to them and get them back on course. I know I'll be depending on that as I do my own Torah reading today. Um, as each of these folks give over the Torah that they have worked so hard on, we hold them in the beauty of their chanting and we hold them just as much in the, in the moments where they forget a tune or a vowel. We'll welcome up for our first aliyah, Moon Zlotnik. Na la hamod, na la hamod, Leia bat devora uperets, alia rishona. Barhu er Adonai Hamborach, Baruch Adonai Hamborach Leolam Ba'ed, Baruch Adonai Hamborach Leolam Ba'ed, Baruch Ata Adonai Elo Heinu Melech Haolam, Asher Bachar Banu Mikol Ha'amim, V'natan Lanu Et Torato, Baruch Ata Adonai. No tain ha Torah. Amen. Oh, I just lost it. Ah, thank you. Okay. Yada bear Adonai El Moshe Le Mor. Da bear El Bene Israel Le Mor. Isha Ki Tazria. Fialada Zahar Vitamea Shiva Yamin Kime Nidat Devota Tidma Uvayom Hashni Yimo Basar Orlato Ushloshim Yom Ushloshet Yamim Te shave, bead me tahara, behold kodesh, lo tiga, ve al hamikdash, ve el hamikdash, lo tavo, ad melot, ye me tahara. Barahu Baruch Atarunai Eloheinu Melech Haolam Asher Natan Lanu Torat Emet Vachaye Olam No Tabitochenu Baruch Atarunai No Tain HaTorah Amen Three, two, one Mazal Tov! That really was Thank awesome. you so okay. much. You, should I keep that?
that spot or you'll keep it right okay. there. There's a tradition that while we have the Torah out, we have our prayers have a little bit of superpowers to them. And so we reserve some of the most important prayers of our service for this moment. I'll invite folks to turn to page 253. And we'll take a second to pray for, pray for healing for those in our life and in our community that are ill. We'll be singing starting in the second paragraph on the page. I'll pause in the middle and look around the room and invite folks to give over the names of anyone that you're wanting to pray for healing. Mi May the source of strength who bless the ones before us help us find the courage to make our lives a blessing and let us say ah. Today we're praying for continue with our Torah reading. I forgot to say at the beginning of the service, um, Barry, if um, you could help distribute any chumashes, if anyone would like to be following along in the service. Oh, Julie Jacobs has done an incredible job. They have already been distributed. <laughs> Barry, you need to do nothing. <laughs> we'll continue with our second B-mitzvah, um, with our second B-mitzvah cohort member, Ave, if you'd like to come up to help bless and read our second aliyah. Baruch Hu et Adonai Hamavarar. Baruch Adonai Hamavarak Le'olam Vaed. Baruch Adonai Hamavarak Le'olam Vaed. Baruch Ata Adonai Eloheinu Melech Ha'olam Asher Bachar Banu Mikol Ha'amim Benatan Lanu et Torato Baruch Ata Adonai Noten HaTorah. Amen. The Imni gave out a lead, the Tame Ashivuahim, Kenidata, the Shashim Yom, the Sheshet Yamim, Teshev, Aldame Tahora, Uvim Lot Yame Tahora, Levain, Olevat Tahavi. 
Keves ben shana to le ola, o ven yona o tor le chatat, el petach o el mohed, el ha kohen. Vehiv krivo lifne adonai, viper aleha, vitahara, mi me korda meha, sot torat hayoledet. La zahar ola nikiva, beim lo tim sayada, te se velake hash de torim, o shene bene yona, echad le la ve echad le ratat, veiper aleha. Hakohen Vitaheira. Baruch Atadonai, Eloheinu Melechaolam, Asher Natan Lanu Torat Emet, Vahaye Olam Nata Betochenu, Baruch Atadonai, Noten HaTorah. Amen. I'll now call up our third Torah reader, Michelle. Na na la mo na la. Oh my gosh, make that our third uh, Torah reader, Darcy. I should have looked over to my right. <laughs> na la mo na la mo. Lea Ezra mi bait Avraham vasera alia shishit. Baruch Hu at Adonai HaMavorach Baruch Adonai HaMavorach Le'olam Ra'ed Baruch Adonai HaMavorach Le'olam Ra'ed Baruch at Adonai Eloheinu Melech HaOlam Asher Bacharbanu Min Kul Hamim Lenat Lan Lanu at Torato Baruch at Adonai Noten HaTorah Amen Vaida Adonai El Moshe El Haron no more Adam Hia Hia the Orbis Aro the Ejos a pocket over the Haya the Orbis Aro the Negazarat the Huva El Haron Hakahain had me banav hakohanin. We are a hakohen at anaga the or havasar. The say our banaga hapak lavan. Uma e hanega amok me or mistaro nega zarati. There are who hack a hen, let him may or cho. The imba hair at Nevana, the oar and the sorrow. The amok and my eha min ha oar. Who sarah no ha pak levan. The hiski hack a hen. Atanega Shabbat Yamin. Baruch Atadonai, the Hainu Malakalam, Ashenatan Lanu Torat, Amat, the Hayelam Natabeto Hainu, Baruch Atadonai, no Tain Hatora. Amen. Yeshako, three, two, one. We'll turn to our fourth Aliyah, and I will call up Michelle to continue our reading. Na la hamod, na la hamod, Miriam bat Avraham vasera, alia rivii. Ra'ahu, right there. Yo, Steve. Ba. Baruch. 
Barhu et Adnonai Hamarach Vayat. Baruch Adonai Hamarach Leolam Vayad. Baruch Adonai Hamarach Leolam Vayad. Baruch Adonai Eloheinu Melech Olam Asher Bachar Bananu Ba Banu Mikol Hamim Vetan Ninatan Lanu Et Torato Baruch Adonai Noten HaTorah Amen. Vira Amen. Vira Ahu. Vira Ahu Hakohe. I'm sorry. Just. Amen. Bayom Hashavi Vehine Hadnega Ahmad Beenav Lofasa Hanega Baor. Vehiskiro Hakohen Shiv at Yamim Shenit Vira Hakohen Oto Bayom Hashavi Shenit Vehine Ke ha ha nega, velo fa sa ha nega ba or. Vehi veti haro ha kohen, mis pa ha tihi, vehi bes bega da ha, veta er. Vehim pa sa tif se ha mis pa hat. Ba or ahare hera oto el hakohen le ta orato venir a sheni el hakohen vira a hakohen vehine pase ta. Hamis pahat ba or veti me o hakohen saraati. Three, two, one. Let's all go. Twice. Baruch Ata Adonai Olam. Asher natana nu Torah emet vechaye olam neta betohenu baruch ata Adonai no tena Torah. Amen. Let's try that again. Three, two, one. Mazal Tov. Oh, you read so beautifully. Yeshakalach. We have an opportunity to honor a bunch of the loved ones that have supported these four on their way. I would love to call up for them to bless us in the next Aliyah. Mindy, Della, Anna, Savannah, Dan, Eli, Malia, Lauren, Ethan, Kendrick, Olivia, Magpie, Tony, John, Sarah, Ashley, Hannah, and Chesed. Chesed will be joining us on Zoom if folks want to cluster on this side of the Dima. Ella, will you be our designated? <laughs> Welcome, everyone. Thank you so much for being up here. Steve is going to kiss. Right here. I'm going to pass you the kiss. And on the count of three. Three, two, one. Barhu et Adonai Hamvorach. Baruch Adonai Hamvorach Leolam Ba'ed. Baruch Adonai Hamvorach Leolam Ba'ed. Baruch atah Adonai, Eloheinu melech ha'olam, asher bahar banu mikol ha'amim, v'natan lanu et torato, Baruch atah Adonai, noten ha'torah. Amen. 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 Nehegat sarat. 
Ki tihye be Adam, be huva el ha kohen, be ra ha kohen, be hine se et levana ba or, be hi ha fecha se ar lavan, umichyat, be sa chai ba se et, tsara at no shenet hi, be or be saro, be time o ha kohen, lo yaskirenu kitame hu, be imparoach tifrach ha tsara at ba or, be chiseta ha tsara at, et kol or ha nega, me rosho ve ad raglav, Lechomar e ene hakohen. Baruch ata Adonai Eloheinu melech haolam Asher natan lanu Torah temet Vechaye olam nata betochinu Baruch ata Adonai Noten ha Torah Amen I'd like to offer you all a quick blessing, a Misha Berach. Misha Berach avotenu v'imotenu Avraham v'yitzchach v'yakov. Blessed are you, supporters of our beloved adult mitzvah cohort. Thank you for your steadfast support of these folks. Thank you for helping get them here today. Thank you for listening to them practice endlessly. Thank you for showing them support even when they are nervous standing in front of others. May you go from strength to strength. May you return to this bima. May you know the love and support of community in the way that you have given love and support to these folks. And we say together, Amen. Mazal Tov, you all can take a seat. We'll have one final aliyah where I have the opportunity to call this Be Mitzvah cohort up to the Torah um, for a second time each. They will bless in and I will read, and then at the end of that, we will have a chance to sing to them wildly. Na la mod, na la mod, Lea Batavora Uperets, Avraham Ben Avraham Vesara, Lea Ezra, me bait Avraham Vesara, Umiriam Bat Avraham Vesara, Alia Shishit. Baruch Adonai Hamvarach Le'olam Vahed Baruch Adonai Hamvarach Le'olam Vahed Baruch Atah Adonai Eloheinu Melech Olam Asher Bachar Banu Mikol Ami Benatan Lanu El Torato Baruch Atah Adonai Noten HaTorah Amen Vera ha kohen, vehine chista ha tarat, et kol besaroho, vitihar, vitihar, et vitihar, et ha naga, kulo, kulo, ha fachlavan, taho, tahor hu, uvayom, he, uvayom, Hera od vo ho 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 basar ha 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 yitame yit maha vera ha ha kohen et ha basar ha 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 Tane hu hu tsarat hu hu.
Simen Tova, Mazel Tova, Mazel Tova, Simen Tova, Simen Tova, Mazel Tova, Mazel Tova, Simen Tova, Simen Tova, Mazel Tova, Mazel Tova, Simen Tova, Yeah, Elanu, Yeah. Mazel Tov cohort, you have done beautifully. You have brought Torah into the heart of our community. Thank you all so, so much. We're going to continue with some more words of Torah coming from Moon. <laughs> Michelle's children might have this role. If you can help us pick up a little bit of candy. Shabbat shalom. Okay. Uh, initially, when I read this week's Parsha Tazria, I was offended. It seemed as if women were being punished for having babies, and even more so girl babies, declaring them unclean and isolating them, along with others who are being isolated for skin diseases. Bringing new life into the world seems like a huge mitzvah, while skin disease seems circumstantial and no one's fault. <clears throat> As I read more, I learned that at the core of these teachings is the notion of tahor and tameh, pure and impure, which simplistically can be translated to life and not life. Things that make one impure are contact with dead animals and dead humans, skin diseases, menstruation, semen, and childbirth. Contact with all of these can be remedied through various purifications and rituals. Unfortunately, these terms, pure and impure, or clean and unclean, are interpreted often in a moral sense, leading to misunderstanding and resentment. If we understand Tahor and Tameh instead as spiritually whole, and spiritually vulnerable, then they speak to times in our lives when we may need spiritual protection or a time to recover from spiritual vulnerability. Looking further, I came across some reading that aligned tame or impurity with grief, which I can say from personal experience is a time of spiritual vulnerability. When we lose someone we love, we already feel alone. And it's a specific and particularly painful type of isolation. I remember sitting Shiva for my mom at age 17, surrounded by my family and friends, and feeling completely lost and disconnected. 39 years later, when my identical twin died to ovarian cancer, I was more intimately and deeply connected to family and friends. But I experienced <clears throat> an even deeper aloneness. Even though I was surrounded by people who I loved and people who loved me, the only person I wanted to be with was my sister who was gone. Grief by its very nature is isolating, and it's accompanied by a space that no one can fill. In grief, we are not declared impure and sent away by a priest, but still experience isolation. Can isolation lead to healing, I wondered. There are lessons learned in isolation that don't happen in community. We might learn that we're stronger than we thought. In isolation, there are fewer distractions. We might learn to love reflection, our inner voice, and being alone. In isolation, we are forced to spend time with ourselves, our thoughts and feelings, and turn our focus inward. We might see hidden parts of ourselves, both good and bad. 
it's possible that inward turning can lead to greater self-awareness, and self-awareness can bring recovery and healing. In my journey through grief, I felt spiritually vulnerable, and I learned that isolation made me feel safe. It was an important part of my healing. Could this parsha suggest that some degree of isolation following loss, whether it involves death, disease, discharge of bodily fluids, or birthing a baby is a necessary part of everyone's healing? Maybe what I saw as isolation is different than punishment. Maybe it's a gift. This part of the service always makes me a little bit sad. We're going to move in the direction to putting our Torah away. It's putting away also a little bit of the experience of all of this learning. And so I'd like us to take a moment and pause and think through all of the Torah that we've heard today from Michelle, from Darcy, from Abe, and from Moon. All of the words that they've given us in their Kavanot and Dibre Torah. All of the chanting that they've given us forward. Pressing a little bit of a moment of save in our hearts so we can return to this experience. Okay, I'd love to invite up Della and Anna to help us lift and dress the Torah. You can find the words for this passage on page 252. <laughs> There's a little bit of candy on the Torah, keeping things sweet. <laughs> Vizot ha Torah, asher samoshe, lifne bene Yisrael, al pi Adonai, beyad Moshe. Yismechu ha shamayim, yismechu ha shamayim. Yismechu ha-shamayim v'tagel aretz. Yismechu ha-shamayim. Yismechu ha-shamayim. Yismechu ha-shamayim v'tagel aretz. Yer am hayam. Yer am hayam, yer am hayam, um lo. Yer am hayam, yer am hayam, yer am hayam, um lo. We stay on our feet as we open the ark and return the Torah. Et chayim fi namachazikim ba vechotecha beusha derachecha dachem. can take a seat. We'll now have an opportunity to hear gratitude from our Be Mitzvah cohorts, from Ave to Darcy to Michelle to Moon.
forgot about this part. I thought it was done. Uh, um, I'm going to try and keep it pretty brief, um, just to give you a sense of how I ended up here. Uh, growing up, my family wasn't religious. We occasionally went to a variety of vaguely Protestant-affiliated churches. Um, but from my first attendance at a dear friend's bat mitzvah at age 13, I've always felt a very deep connection with Judaism. That manifested in many different ways over the course of my life. Uh, and by the time I first arrived at Shir Tikva early in the pandemic, I'd known for many years that I wanted to be Jewish. Uh, both the community and the clergy here have been important to my pathway to the mikvah, and I'm happy to be with you uh, here today publicly reaffirming my commitment to Jewish life and learning. Uh, in particular, I'd like to thank my partner, Svana, for her unwavering love. I'd like to uh, embarrass and thank my brother and his girlfriend, Katie, um, for their enthusiastic support uh, and for taking my advice to move to Minneapolis so that they can be here for events like this. <laughs> Uh, to the rest of my chosen family, some of whom are here today, uh, thank you for making life colorful. Um, I'd like to thank Steve Greenberg for being a fantastic Torah teacher, uh, and Rabbi Joey for making this process as minimally stressful as such a thing can be. Um, I'd like to thank all the clergy at Shir Tikva, Rabbi Joey, Rabbi Ariel, and Rabbi Sharon, uh, for the welcoming environment they cultivate and for all they've done individually and collectively uh, for me as Judaism has become a part of my life. Uh, and finally, I'd like to thank the congregation for making this space a wonderful place to be. Uh, and I'm also really thinking I forgot to thank the rest of my cohort, but thank you very much. It was wonderful to not have to do this process alone, um, and I felt very blessed to be with all of you. So, thank you. I want to thank, first off, all the rabbis in my life. If you can, uh, microphone Oops. up by. Better? Perfect. Okay. I want to thank, first of all, all the rabbis in my life, uh, from Rabbi David Thomas, you couldn't be here to Rabbi Rappaport, Rabbi Sharon Seifel, Rabbi Joey, and Rabbi Ariel for listening to the endless questions and guiding me through this process. I want to thank all of the various teachers of Torah and doing Jewish uh, that I've had most recently, but certainly not least Steve, uh, without whose constant support and encouragement, I may not have had the gumption to do this. I have found some amazing friends here who have helped me through so much. If I try to name you all either in person or on Zoom, I'm going to miss someone, so I'm just not going to name you all. Um, I also want to thank my dad and brother, who, even though they don't know much about Judaism and may have never been in a synagogue before, are here to support me. And finally, I want to thank, again, my wonderful cohort and the Shir Tikva community for more broadly welcoming me and making space for me. Thank you. Michelle, you're up. Uh, I began this journey in um, December of 2015, standing before the Kotel. My daughter Lauren and I made a commitment that we were going to um, convert and move forward with this process. It, it took a long time to get here. But my family has been incredibly supportive, so I'd like to thank my oldest daughter Lauren for pushing me to get started on this process many years ago. Um, as we sat on the tarmac at Ben-Gurion, in January of 2016, I believe, I sent an email to Rabbi Jason here at Chertikva, and I said, how do I get started? I'd really love to do this. And when we landed in Twin Cities, I opened up my email, and his response was, do I know you? <laughs> that was it, and yet I continued. Um, <laughs> so I'm, I'm accustomed to being more of a, more of a uh, wallflower. But um, I'd also like to thank Eli and Malia for the inspiration as I watched them learn Torah. And when I really felt like I couldn't do it, heck, they'd done it. So I <laughs> had to be able to do it, right? Um, and Ethan for his encouragement and Dan for his forever support. Rabbi Cohen at, um, at Bet Shalom, uh, Rabbi Rappaport, who we started this process with, Rabbi Ariel and Rabbi Joey for their eternal support. Um, Steve, whose enthusiasm and encouragement knows no bounds, and for the many times I told him, I, I, I can't do this, <laughs> and he told me, yes, you can. Um, to Julie for making me feel part of this community on so many occasions when I really wanted to be a fly on the wall, and she helped me to a different standard. I appreciate all of that. And to this cohort, because ooh, they have been so supportive, and I couldn't have done this alone. Thank you. Moon, you'll finish us up. I 
I'm just going to hand this to you. So, <clears throat> I feel really grateful that today I had a chance to repair something that has been an <clears throat> injury in my life since I was 13 years old, had a bat mitzvah, and was not allowed to touch or read from the Torah. So, it's a thrilling experience to participate as a full human being in today. I want to thank first Rabbi Ariel, who, when I said, do I have to wait till I'm 83, which is the tradition I'd always learned to have a second beat mitzvah, she said, no, just go ahead. We have a cohort. So thank you so much. Uh, Rabbi Joey, you have made this fun, <laughs> really. And Steve has been the toughest and most encouraging teacher I can remember working with. And then my dear, beloved family, Mindy, Della, Anna, and my proxy, Lou, just for all of your encouragement and for being there and supporting me. And then lastly, I would like to thank the Sher Tikva community, the people behind the scenes, and my lovely cohort. Lord, thank you for that lovely modeling of gratitude. On the day of their bi mitzvah, students at Shir Tikva ask the rabbis a question. And we, the rabbis, have the pleasure, sometimes the challenge, of answering those questions. I have to say, um, we use the same binder from bi mitzvah to bi mitzvah. And at the last moment, I realized I hadn't swapped out the question and almost answered the last bi mitzvah student's questions <laughs> instead of you all's. You all brought Michelle, Ave, Moon, and Darcy. You each have brought me a great question, and I will do my best to answer them in one fell swoop. Moon, you asked, what should one say to an adult on the day of their b'mitzvah? <laughs> Michelle, you asked, what advice would you give us for maintaining the Jewish growth and commitment demonstrated today and throughout one's life? Ave, you asked, what advice do you have for weathering the ebbs and flows of, a, of flows of a sense of connection to Jewish faith and identity? And Darcy, you asked, what's your favorite piece of Torah to nerd out over? <laughs> Why? <laughs> okay, I wanna go in reverse order, starting with Darcy's question. The Torah that I love to nerd out over is very much the Torah of Parshat Tazaria. As Moon beautifully chanted, our Parsha begins with the words, when a woman conceives and gives birth. I time and time again find myself returning to perinatal Torah, Torah about pregnancy, birth, and the postpartum. I think my interest in perinatal Torah comes from its very strangeness. So much Jewish writing on the topic of birth holds deep contradictions within it. I've learned from my teachers that when texts present as baffling or surprising, we can often hear historically marginalized voices, the voices of women and queer folk calling out past the hegemonic hold of men's knowledge. Okay, what the heck am I even talking about here? <laughs> I wanna give two examples of wild perinatal Torah and in so doing, I wanna try and begin to answer Michelle Year and Ave Year questions about maintaining and growing a Jewish life over an entire lifetime. One of the first references to birth that we get in the Jewish year comes in the book of Isaiah, in the Haftorah that we read during the first week of the year of Parshat Bereshit. Describing divine anger, the prophet writes, God goes forth like a warrior, like a fighter. God whips up God's anger. God yells, God roars. And this is now a quote from God. I have kept silent far too long, kept still and restrained myself. Now I will scream like a woman in labor. I will pant and I will gasp. Wild, right? God is described first here as a warrior, and then this warrior screams like a person giving birth. Normative conceptions of masculine and feminine dissolve, leaving us with a God and a birthing experience that transcends gender binaries. And in this strange and pregnant metaphor of the warrior God calling out in labor, I hear the frustration of a divine struggling against the categories that us humans would want to create and place on the divine. 
And I hear for us now, Michelle and Ave, a description of potentially the low or hard points of a spiritual life. You all are going to experience moments of big or little disappointments in Jewish living. There might be a come down from the high of this bimitzvah, or disappointment in community, or hard life things that shake us. It sounds a little dramatic, but I think this text gives us permission and a tool to yell out alongside the boundaryless, laboring warrior God. And in those times, the divine is with us, calling out in a discordant harmony, suggesting that something new might yet be born. And then what? If we wait a moment and turn in the first pages of the Talmud, there's a gorgeous scene of the rabbis describing the soundscape, what it would sound like at Jerusalem in the days of the rabbis at night. Rabbi Ariel spoke beautifully about this Torah during the high holidays. What does the city sound like? Like a baby suckling at her parents' chest. And not just that, but also exhausted parents murmuring and gossiping to each other. And not just that, but also God cooing like a dove. The word the rabbis use for cooing can mean not only to coo, but also to growl and scream. Michelle, Ave. On the other side of hard stuff is the potential for simple nourishment, for touch and closeness. There's the potential for finding that partner or friend for a late night conversation. There is a universe of practice and community grounded in the gentle, in the quiet, in the holy place of human connection. And God is also there, still defying category, meeting us with a sound that is love song and cry, is an invitation and a call for help all at once. The sound of the newborn and parent and God suggests that while we might call out from a place of loneliness and sorrow, we grow in spiritual life through loving closeness and dialogue. The path towards this wholeness, it might be as multivalent and complex as these descriptions of God's voice, each of us necessarily finding our way, but just as you all have done as a cohort, these individual journeys, they're gonna weave and harmonize together you will find each other again and again and again. And that gets us to you, Moon. Moon, as far as I know, there are no traditional words to say on an adult, to an adult B-Mitzvah student. Yasha Koach and Mazel Tov feel like not enough for the wandering and wondering and beauty of you all's learning and leadership. And so I want to leave you all with a blessing. Moon, Michelle, Eve, Darcy. May your Torah call out like the scream of a warrior birthing God. May your kindness coo like a dove in the night. And may this tradition be as cozy to you as a late night gossiping session and a late night baby cuddle. So much love to you all in this journey and thank you so much for sharing it with this community. I would now like to invite up Eli, for a word of blessing on something brand spanking new. We'll find the words on page 344. Shehechiano. <laughs> Baruch Adonai Eloheinu Melech HaOlam Shehechianu Vekiamanu Vehigianu Lazman Hazan Thank you guys so much. We'll keep the blessings coming. I'd like to invite up Rabbi Ariel, Steve, and our cohort back to the ark for a quick moment of quieter blessing together.
feet as we begin to put a seal on the service. You can find the words of the Hashivota seven lines down on page 284. The Hashivota Hashivota Elevavecha Elevavecha Adonai
Folks can take a seat. We are not the only people here today. We're joined also by the ancestors of, of our B'mitzvah cohort and by all the spirits and folks that have died in our community at this time in the last 30 days and the, this time in anniversary. I'm gonna read a name of folks that this cohort is remembering and then a list of names that our community is remembering. We'll then turn to Mourner's Kaddish, which you can find on page 294. Ave is remembering today Robert Bullock III and Frida Bullock. Moon is remembering Luann Lewis, Perry and Dorothy Zlotnick, Eva Cranes and Diane Fitzpatrick. Darcy is remembering Denise Gabriel, and Michelle is remembering Matthew Kessler. As a community, rem remembering Gary Diamond, Marvin Antowski, Joe Edelman, Jean Burnett Schultz, Joshua Benov, Malcolm Brenner, Alice DeMeglio, Michael Engel, Alice Fried Epstein, C.O. Goldstein, Harry Goodman, Matthew Kessler, Shirley Krutz, James Landy, Shirley Lieberman, Chi Shang Lu, Charles Manister, Annette Newman, Charles Offner, Ethel Platt, Ruth Ro Rosenblum, Vic Rosenthal, Aaron Rosenthal, Michael Sachs, Harold Stein, Seymour Sy Stoller, Jerome Mugen, and Shirley Zimmerman. We'll rise in body or spirit on page 294. <laughs> Bagala uvisman kari vimru amen. Yehesh me raba me barach le oma omaya maya. Yid barach vish tabach vid paar vid romam vid nase. Vid hadar vid ale vid halal shame de kutsha brechu. Me no minko birchata vishirata. Tush bechata venechemata. Damiram Bayama Vimru Amen. Yehe Shlama Rabba Min Shamaya. Vikhaim Alenu Velko Yisrael Vimru. O se shalom Bimramav. Huya se shalom. Alenu Velko Yisrael. Velko Yashve Tevel Vimru Amen. Folks can take a seat. I'll invite Barry up to the Bima to give some gifts and words of blessing from the community. Shabbat shalom. <laughs> Mazel tov to all of you. I, I have a few words to say to you, but before that, I have a brief announcement. At the end of the service, can you bring your seduers over there and please pull out your program, if you could, out of there and you can just put it right on there for me. I'd really appreciate it. Thank you so much. So, it's hard to see all of you here. Um, I just want to say, stand back here. Um, thank you, thank you, thank you, on behalf of Sher Tikva, for your beautiful chanting and your wonderful words. Um, it was really, truly a blessing. Um, I teach sixth grade, and I've been through scores of mitzvahs, but these are always my favorite, the adult mitzvahs. And I was thinking about why. And I think there's a few reasons. Um, number one, you truly have a choice. Um, when I was bar mitzvah, I really, I don't know if I had a choice or not, but you know, we've all been through this, and you've gone through this. I know some of your kids go because they're expected to go. You don't have to go. And you're making the choice to do it, and that's incredible. It is so, your words um, really come from the heart. And they're so wise, and they're so beautiful. And um, that's something for me that I take away from, um, from all of you. And there's something about seeing older people, like myself, I'm, one day I hope to do this again, um, up here, you know? There's the zoot, the um, feeling of wisdom that you have, and the courage is really amazing. And I know all of you have done this for one reason or another, but what you give back to all of us is amazing. What you give to the community is incredible because you are continuing this wonderful, wonderful tradition 
of adults getting up, choosing to get up, and chanting. So that is just a beautiful, beautiful thing, and I thank you all from by my heart for this. I am so grateful to all of you. So I have some gifts, and hopefully you'll be able to use these. These are um, scholarships for adult ed at Shir Tikva, and I know there are great classes here. Here you go. And again, mazel tov to all of you. Shabbat shalom. I have to say, um, the thing I might be most proud about over the course of this entire Be Mitzvah process is learning how to make a gift certificate on, <laughs> on Canva. <laughs> um, Barry, thank you so, so much for that. One thing that I was thinking as you were speaking is uh, um, a, a, a thing that we're missing in the adult Be Mitzvah experience that we have in the youth Be Mitzvah is in, in our youth um, Be Mitzvah, the parents get up and bless and bless their kid. Um, and Barry, I feel like you, you are the surrogate uncle of this community, being able to bless these folks from the position that those parents might otherwise. Thank you so, so much. When we're done with the service today, in just a moment after blessing uh, wine and challah and singing a little bit, we will move in the direction of a joyous lunch. There is room set up outside, although I'm guessing maybe more than we had anticipated given the beautiful weather, we'll collaboratively set up some chairs. And there is a delightful potluck waiting for us outside these doors. Um, things are, um, there's some labeling of vegan and gluten-free. Um, as you came in, you should have had an opportunity to do that. Um, please stick around, enjoy each other, and have an opportunity to congratulate this wonderful cohort. And I'll just take one more uh, uh, last opportunity to look at you, Steve, and say thank you so, so much. You have brought us together for this. You have given to over Torah in this community for so many years. Thank you, thank you, thank you for your dedication to these students and for making this happen. Okay, we are going to bless uh, our wine. You can find the blessing on page five. And cohort, if I could invite you all to stand up here. Okay. It's Beret Prihagathen. Three, two, one. Baruch Adonai Eloheinu Melech HaOlam Beret Prihagathen Tadanai Eloheinu Melech HaOlam Hamotzi Lechem Min Haaretz Petehavon And we will give these guys one more round of Simen Tova, Mazel Tova, Mazel Tova, Simen Tova, Simen Tova, Mazel Tova, Yeah, Thank you guys so, so much. Everyone, please enjoy some nosh. Yes, I call off. Yes, I call off.